good afternoon to all of you uh, so last lecture we discussed that f is a function from x to y which is a onto function and uh, x is a topological space that means a topology tau x which is defined on x but on y we have no topology so far so what topology we can define on y using the topology on x and using the function f so that is this definition of quotient topology so once i know what are the open sets in y uh, once i know what are the open sets in x i will define a subset uh, v of y is open if f inverse v is open set in x so not only in this way i am defining open subsets of y but also i am making the function f continuous because if i consider y, v is open set uh, if f inverse v is open then that is exactly the definition of f is continuous right if f from x to y is continuous if f inverse v is open for every open set v on y so this definition not only defines the open subset of y but it uh, automatically make the function f continuous with respect to this special topology which is known as quotient topology so let us uh, start to the lecture with uh, some example basic example <clears throat> so let me consider some uh, simple function so let i have a, a, a set which consists of three elements a b and c and uh, i'm defining a function on let p be a function from r to a on r i am defining standard topology uh, let p be a function from r to a r to this set uh, be a function defined by So I'm defining p x to be the value a if my x is a positive number. I'm defining p x is equal to b if my x is negative number, and p x is c if x is a zero element. So now this all three cases will consider will. Uh, Take care of all real numbers because the real number is either negative, positive, or it is zero. Right. So that means p is uh, defined over all the real numbers, and it takes uh, all possible values of a because what are the elements of a, a, b, or c? So all these values are attained by p. So it is clear that p is a onto function onto the domain o domain a <clears throat> so my def my function i have defined which is a function from r to a on the set r i have defined the topology which is standard topology on the set a i am not given any topology so i want to define a topology on a uh, which is known as the quotient topology so let us find out what is the quotient topology on a coming from this function p so the quotient topology by definition induced by p 
and the standard topology on R. So here x is r because our function is from x to y, x is r, y is a in the standard notation. So what is the topology? Topology, uh, this is the topology on a, so let me denote it by tau way. So which is the quotient topology. So what is the definition of quotient topology? So quotient topology is that all the subsets of A which are open if P inverse of V is open in the codomain X. So let us see what is the definition. V is open in Y if F inverse V is open in X. So X is R here, the set of real numbers and on which we have a standard topology. So what we'll get is V subset of Y, Y is A in this example, and uh, P inverse V is open in R with respect to the standard topology. So this is basically by definition, what is the quotient topology on A. So every time uh, we cannot write down what are the all elements of the quotient topology, but uh, this is a special example because it takes values either A, B or C, right? So basically uh, we know all the possible subsets of A because A has three elements. So maximum possible uh, subsets of the power set of A con contains two power three, so maximum eight elements. So in this example, we can actually find what is exactly tau way. So let us see what, what, what is exactly tau way. For that, we have to find inverse image of every subset of A, right? So let us find out inverse image of every subset. So suppose I take P inverse A. So what is P inverse A? Inverse A is uh, uh, the real number x such so that P of x is A. So what are the possible real numbers which takes values A? So let us see the definition of the function. So by the definition of the function, we know that P of x is A if x is positive, right? X is a positive real number. So P inverse x, x is uh, the set of all x so that x is greater than zero. The set x in R so that x is greater than zero. So now what is this set? Uh, so usually we write such a set as a simply zero to infinity. Right, the interval zero to infinity, open interval. And uh, then we know that open interval is, uh, this set is open in the standard topology on R. So let us go uh, back to tau wave. What is tau wave? Tau wave is the subset of A for which P inverse V is open in R. So this is open in R, right? P inverse of singleton is open in R. So therefore, singleton A is the elements of the topology. Right? So basically V is equal to singleton A we are taking in this case. So let us check uh, whether singleton B and singleton C also belongs to tau A or not. So for that, uh, let us find out uh, the inverse image of B and C. So we know that uh, P of X is B if X is less than zero. So that means P inverse B is essentially minus infinity to zero. That's the definition of 
the function p and this is open set in r so therefore b is element of tau v right and uh, similarly we can find p inverse of c so we know that px is c if x is 0 so that means p inverse c is uh, only singleton 0 and then we know that this set is not open in subset of r with respect to standard topology right so tau wave, uh, give, gives that the subset is open if the inverse image is open set but here inverse image is not open set so therefore this set is not belongs to tau wave so not belongs to tau wave means c singleton c is not opening the quotient topology because this set is not open here it was open so singleton a is open singleton b is open but singleton c is not open so these are the possible singleton subsets of a now what about the doubleton subsets so let us check that so now p inverse of let us say a comma b so we know that the inverse uh, function preserves the union so basically a a comma b we can write as singleton a union singleton b right so this we can write in this way and that is exactly equal to p inverse of a union p inverse of p so this is true for every function p right because f inverse of a union b is same as f inverse of set a union f inverse of set b so that property we are using here and uh, then we know that pair what is p inverse a p inverse a is open interval 0 to infinity p inverse b is open interval minus infinity to 0 so this is nothing but real number minus singleton 0 so this set is open set and since this set is open set this belongs to tau a so this set is open in the quotient topology on a Similarly, we can check that if I take P inverse of the double turn set A comma C, that is same as P inverse of A union P inverse of C, right? And P inverse of A is nothing but open interval 0 to infinity p inverse c is singleton 0 so what i will get is i will get closed interval so this is not open and this side is not open means uh, so this is basically p inverse of ac so therefore the set a comma c does not belong to tau wave And similarly, we can check that the other set is also not in tau wave, which is p inverse of b comma c, because this value is nothing but minus infinity to zero. This is also not open. So therefore, b c is not there in tau wave. So now, double turn sets we have checked. Now only set remaining is the whole set A and uh, the final thing is P inverse of the whole set A and we know that P is the onto function right so therefore this is whole R 
and whole are is open right real line is open set subset of real line with respect to standard topology so therefore a is element of tau a so let us so we have checked all the subsets of a in this particular example there is no other subset remaining because a has only three elements so all subsets contains at most three elements so finally what we get is we can explicitly write down tau a what is tau a tau a is of course um, we know that pi inverse of phi is phi null set so therefore phi is uh, element of tau a right so phi tau a contains phi it contains a it contains a singleton a singleton b and singleton a comma b so this is what we are getting as a quotient topology on a which is induced by induced by means it is coming by considering the given function p and it also depends on the which topology we are considering in the domain so with respect to the standard topology so in other words uh, what does it mean is if i change the function p and if i change the domain uh, topology on the domain r then my tau a will change depending on that so for example if i if replace if i replace b and c here then you will see that uh, there will be some corresponding change in the tau a right so for example i define uh, px equal to b when x is 0 and px is equal to c when x is less than 0 so then correspondingly my topology will change <coughs> right so this is the method basically how to find the quotient topology and uh, it also explains the definition of quotient topology for this particular example okay so what we discuss is uh, we discuss the quotient topology and uh, before I uh, go to the definition of the quotient map, I want to consider uh, uh, some more definitions which is related to continuity. <clears throat> so there is an important result in function analysis which is known as open mapping theorem. So that is related to this definition. So a function f from x to y is uh, said to be open function open map if it sent uh, the image of open set is open so whenever v is open set in x then f of v will be open set in y right so <clears throat> so this is the definition of open map so if you remember the definition of continuous function then f is continuous if inverse image of open set is open 
but the difference here is that we are not considering inverse image we are considering the image actual image of the function so whenever the set is open in the domain f of v is open in the codomain but when we check the continuity we start with the subset in the codomain and we check the inverse image of that is open in the domain All right so this is the difference between open and continuous function condition so there is one uh, small result which we can discuss here <clears throat> that uh, okay so similarly we can define also the the closed sets so the the way, the way we define open set the, the same way we can define the closed set also and a set is closed if f from x to y is closed map if f of w is closed is closed whenever w is closed in x close subset in x so f of w is closed in y This, uh, if, if you remember the first result which we proved in the when we discussed the continuous function is we can characterize the, the the condition of continuity in terms of the basis elements right the, so the same way we can cons, uh, we can also convert uh, this criteria in terms of basis so let b be a basis This is for a topology. On a set X, then the function f from X to Y is, is open if and only if the inverse image of V is open sorry f of v is open in y when b belongs to b right so b is a basis element basically so <clears throat> what is the difference is uh, here we are checking this condition only for the basis element uh, however, in the in the definition, we are checking it for all open sets instead of basis element. So one of the cases is uh, simpler that if I know that this condition holds for uh, every open set, then trivially it will hold for every basis element. So since every basis element v is open in x open subset of x by the definition of open set so if i can if i consider this property to be let us say star then by the definition of open set for the function f property star holds for f so what does this means is that by definition we know that inverse the, uh, the image of every open set is open so in particular basic element is op open 
so therefore inverse image of basic open site is also open so start follows from the first condition so this this will prove our forward part which is simpler now the converse part which uh, you may have also guessed what is the proof because we use this several times so suppose property star for the function f so if property star holds for the function f so that means what that means uh, the inverse image of basis element is open for every basis element so therefore f inverse b is open for each basis element in b where b is the basis of x so now we want to show that f inverse v is open for open subset v of x and uh, then we know that since v is open subset of x and uh, b is a basis for the topology on x we can write the open set as a union of basic elements right uh, for all x in v there exist basis element so that x is in bx which is contained in v so therefore singleton x is subset of bx which is subset of v this is true for every x so therefore we can write v as a union of x in x bx so v we can write as union of basis elements and inverse image of basis elements is open so therefore f inverse of v is same as f inverse of union of bx and uh, that is union of f inverse of bx f inverse of bx is open right f inverse of bx is open by the property star which we already noted and then we know that arbitrary union of open set is open so therefore f inverse v is open in x oh, sorry why i am writing f inverse i have to use the f not f inverse so we are not checking continuity we are checking the function is open so we have to apply only f <clears throat> So when I add, yes, yeah, so we so we have to check only f, not inverse. So in the condition I have written correctly, condition star I have applied only f, but later on I did typo. So throughout this uh, we are applying only f, not f inverse, because we are checking that function is open. We are not checking that function is continuous. Fine. So this is the criteria which we can use sometimes to check the function is open or not. So we'll check only that the basic on the ba basic element whether the image is open or not. If it is open, then the function is open. So let us check the simplest uh, example of a uh, open function. So we discuss uh,
we uh, discuss the projection map so let uh, pi 1 be the from x cross y to x be the projection map defined by so on x cross y we have the the product topology and we will define it pi 1 is pi 1 of x y uh, it is defined to be x right so whenever we map pi 1 on x y it will give us the value x so this function uh, we want to check open with respect to the product topology on x cross y so on x we have a topology on y we have a topology that is given and on x cross y we have a product topology so with respect to product topology whether this pi1 is open or not so that we it is an open map or not that we want to check so what we know about product topology is we know its basis element right what is the basis for product topology and uh, we know that uh, a particular basis element of the product topology is of the form u cross v where u is element of tau x v is element of tau y so that means u is open in x v is open subset of y with respect to the given topology right so we are given the these topologies and uh, we want to check that this function is uh, is open or not so by using the previous result we need to check it on the basis element only so if we can show that pi 1 of u cross v is open in x then we are done because we need to check only for the basis elements and this is a typical basis element u cross v so note that first of all we have to find out what is pi 1 of u cross v so note that pi 1 of u cross v is nothing but u right so why it is that because if you remember if i take uh, u and v then my u cross v will be of this form and then i will project this set u cross v on the x axis that is exactly this projection map so what essentially i will get is the pi 1 of u cross v will be by this set that is exactly u right so pi 1 of u cross v is u and therefore and then we know that what is u u is element of tau x from the definition of basis we know that u belongs to tau x we will consider only u cross v for which u belongs to tau x and v belongs to tau y so pi 1 of u cross v is open set because it is element of tau x so therefore pi 1 is open by previous result <clears throat> so it
it is open that is clear now but uh, what about uh, whether it is closed map or not so next example is that whether python is closed map or not so let us see because anyway we are considering kind of r2 only so suppose if i take x is r y is also r so x and y are real numbers and on r we if we define standard topology then x cross y is nothing but r2 and on which also we will get the product topology is nothing but standard topology so this we have already discussed so what is the pi1 map here that will be from x cross y to x and that becomes the map from r2 to r because x is r y is r so x cross y is r2 and uh, it is defined by f of x1 x2 sorry phi1 of x1 x2 is x1 right so if i want to check that this this map is closed or not i have to apply this function on some particular closed set in r2 so if you if if if, if you recall uh, this set so consider a set a to b the pairs x y and r2 such that x into y equal to 1 so if you recall this is nothing but uh, the equation of y is equal to 1 by x and then you know what is the graph of these so the graph of this is this one okay so this is x y equal to 1 So this set x y equal to one is a closed subset of R two. In the standard topology, So standard topology on R2 means with respect to real analysis, it is a closed subset. Why it is closed subset? Because its complement is open. You take any element in the complement, you can always find a neighborhood around that, which is uh, in the complement itself. So therefore, this set A is closed. Now, question is, what is the uh, pi one of A? If pi one of a is not closed that means phi one is not a closed map so if i project this uh, uh, this set a on the x axis then you will see that the projection of the first quadrant will come on this side so all these points will be there and projection of this uh, third quadrant will be all these points excluding origin right so therefore pi one of a is nothing but r minus zero zero will not come in that and all other real numbers will come right so this set is is uh, not closed because it is an open set open subset of r right but a is a closed set so if pi1 is closed then pi of pi1 of a should be closed but pi1 of a is not closed so therefore pi1 is not a closed function right so so 
so this this is the uh, main uh, definition of closed map and closed function and uh, then the final definition which uh, i want to discuss is a uh, quotient map so what is quotient map a subjective function f from x to y between topological spaces is called a quotient map if this condition is satisfied so what is the condition the, con the condition is that whenever v subset of y is open implies f inverse v is open in x so this is uh, whenever v is open subset of y f inverse v is open subset in x so here it is open with y uh, with respect to the given topology on y right so let us uh, discuss <coughs> Okay, so let me stop for uh, today lecture here uh, because already wasted some time initially. So